Hello, members and friends of Eastwood Fellowship Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Tim. I'm the senior pastor here, and I bring you this greetings, this greeting from Ephesians chapter 1. To the saints who belong to Eastwood Baptist Church in St. Thomas and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, uh, we apply that to all who are tuning in to uh, listen to this broadcast with us. Just a couple of announcements. Um, this is a bittersweet announcement. Our dear sister Vera was called home yesterday. She is now in the presence of her Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All of the troubles and trials of this life are over for her and she's in perfect peace and joy. But we certainly want to pray for her family as they mourn her loss. We also want to keep praying for those who are struggling with feelings of isolation, those who are struggling with anxiety and fear over the present situation. And we can give thanks that a um, couple of people from our congregation, Gunars and Alfreda, are home safely and, of course, are now in a two-week period of isolation, and we certainly want to pray for them. So let's just pray for these things right now, and then I'll share with you the hymn of the day and the verse of the day. Our dear Father, we thank you for uh, your help and your blessing to us each and every day. We confess, our Father, that we need you. We can't do life without you. And Father, nor do we want to do so. And so, Father, we commit ourselves to you once again. We thank you, our Father, that our dear sister is in the presence, in your presence, even as we pray this, more, this day. And uh, Lord, we Thank you for our blessed hope that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, but we pray, our Father, for her family who are struggling to process this separation. Give them grace. Give them strength, we pray. Encourage their hearts. And Lord, we pray, continue to pray for those who are struggling with feelings of isolation, loneliness, fear. Uh, Lord, you know all of the feelings that we face as we are confronted with the unknown and the challenges of uh, keeping ourselves inside and away from uh, as many people as we can. And so we look to you for grace for that. And our Father, we thank you that Gunars and Alfreda were able to get home safely. And we ask our Father for your blessing upon them as they um, isolate themselves for this two-week period. And uh, Lord, we thank you that they have those who are looking after them, and we do pray, our Father, for your hand upon them and to care for them. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our hymn from the day for the day is titled, O Come My Soul, Bless Thou the Lord Thy Maker. And I'm going to read to you verses 2, 3, and 4 because uh, they're such an encouragement. If you want to look in the description section, I've provided a link uh, that you can click on or copy and paste into your browser, and it will bring you to the uh, a site that has both the uh, lyrics and the tune. So it would be a blessing to you to go there and listen to it or even sing along. Good is the Lord and full of kind compassion, most slow to anger, plenteous in love, Rich is his grace to all that humbly seek him, boundless and endless as the heavens above. His love is like a father's to his children, tender and kind to all who fear his name. For well he knows our weakness and our frailty. He knows that we are dust. He knows our frame. We fade and die like flowers that grow in beauty, like tender grass that soon will disappear. But evermore the love of God is changeless, still shown to those who look to him in fear. And the chorus says, bless him forever, wondrous in might. Bless him, his servants, that in his will delight. What a great hymn. And it's based on Psalm 103, verse 1, which says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I'd encourage you to take some time today to read that whole psalm. I say that because I know that if you read it, it will be a great blessing to your heart and soul. Well, this brings us to our devotional this morning. We're continuing through John chapter 13. 
We've looked at the fact that uh, Jesus has told his disciples that he's going to leave them and they can't follow him. And as a result, they're full of worry and fear and anxiety, perhaps even frustration and anger. And Jesus, even though he's about to go to the cross and suffer a most horrible, shameful, terrible death, we see that his concern is for his disciples. And he wants to comfort them, and so he expresses his love for them over and over again throughout chapters 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And we've seen how he washed his disciples' feet, uh, seeking to demonstrate to them his own love for them, his humility, and encouraged them, commanded them to do likewise to one another. Now we come to verse 21. I'm going to read uh, to verse 30, and then I'm going to make a few comments, and, and then we'll close in prayer. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table and at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then, after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel, he immediately went out, and it was night. Our Father, as we look into your holy word, we pray that you would give us insight, understanding, Help us to pay attention, Lord, where we need to make changes. Help us to make them. Help us to be faithful, Lord, to apply the truth of your word to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now in the first verse, verse 21, it says, After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Jesus was troubled in spirit. Now that word troubled is a strong word which, mean, which speaks of severe mental or spiritual turmoil. If we look into the scriptures for its use, we find that it was used to describe the fear of the disciples when they first saw Jesus walking on the water. Imagine that sight. Uh, we find that recorded in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 26. Then there was Zacharias when he was confronted by the angel in the temple who was giving him good news of, of the coming birth of a son that they had prayed for for many years. It says he was troubled in Luke chapter 1 and verse 12. And then the fear of the disciples when Jesus first appeared to them after his resurrection in Luke chapter 24 and verse 38. Uh, Jesus, when he saw the suffering of Mary and Martha over Lazarus' death, it says in John chapter 11 verse 33 that he was troubled. He was deeply troubled. And then we see Jesus' distress, his being troubled at the prospect of the cross in John chapter 12 and verse 27. Well, in this passage, we see that Jesus was troubled by Judas' ungratefulness in spite of how he had loved him. Think about this, brothers and sisters. In spite of spending three years with Judas, teaching him, loving him, ministering to him. Perhaps even we might want to take the liberty of guessing that at some point uh, Judas had gotten sick and perhaps Jesus had healed him. In spite of all of these things, Judas betrayed Jesus. What a sad reality. What a sad event. And Jesus is troubled by it. He's poured his life into this man and this man is now turning against him in the most wicked and cruel way. I want you to note that in John chapter 14 and verse 1, Jesus told his disciples not to let their hearts be troubled. 
Instead, they were to believe that he was going to prepare a place for them and that he would certainly return to take them home to be with him. So Jesus was troubled, but the disciples were not to be troubled. Why? Why is this? Why was it okay for Jesus to be troubled, but it was not okay for the disciples to be troubled? Brothers and sisters, it's because we are not able to bear our troubles, but Jesus is. And so we are told in the scriptures, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for us. Oh, what a precious truth this is, that we have one, our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who always prays for us. He is always interceding for us. He is the one who will carry our troubles, bear our burdens. I want you to remember also that in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, it tells us that Jesus suffered in every way as we suffer so that he might sympathize with us. What a glorious truth. I'm going to read from, to you from this passage. It's such an encouragement. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but who, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. And listen to this. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, was, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And listen to these comforting words. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Brothers and sisters, one of the truths of this passage I've just read to you is that being having been troubled, Jesus is able to sympathize with us in our trouble. Does that encourage your heart? As you think about what's happening in the world around you, what a joy, what a, what a comfort to know that Jesus knows exactly what you and I are facing in these difficult days. And we can go to him and we can expect and we can know that he cares for us. He will help us in our time of trouble. Well, I'm going to continue reading from verse 22. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was rec reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas the son of Simon Iscariot. Now, it says in verse 26, Jesus answered. He answered John's request to know who it was that was going to betray Jesus. Now, it would appear that John's question and Jesus' answer were given publicly. If, as I surmise, this was said in the hearing of all the disciples, 
This was an opportunity for Judas. You see, he alone of all the disciples knew that he was the betrayer. Well, and of course, Jesus knew as well. Even at that moment, there was an opportunity for him to confess his sin and repent of his wickedness. He had not yet taken the morsel of bread. Brothers and sisters, such is the heart of God to many. Over and over again, he gives warnings and calls people to repentance. So great is God's mercy and grace to sinners that the scriptures say that if any are condemned at the judgment day, they will have no excuse. God will have been so faithful to call them and give them opportunities and all of those will be brought to back to them, back to their memory at that day. And no one will, will have an excuse when they stand before God. You know, if you are one of those people who have not yet put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, I call on you to turn from your sins, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and walk with him in obedience to his commands. Well, let's keep reading. In verse 27, it says, Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Now, in verse 27, it says that no one at the table, this is verse 28, I'm sorry, it says no one at the table knew why he had said this. In spite of the fact that John had asked who the betrayer was, um, and Jesus had clearly indicated that it was uh, Judas, somehow they missed it. Although Jesus had clearly identified Judas as his betrayer, the disciples were unable to understand this. You see, it was unthinkable to them that any one of them would stoop so low as to do such a wicked thing. And yet, here was Judas, possessed by the devil. Now, in light of this, remember Paul's warning to the Ephesian elders in Acts chapter 20, verses 29 and 30. He said in those verses that savage wolves would arise from their own midst. John also warned of something like this in 1 John 2.19 when he spoke of those who walked away from the church. Brothers and sisters, we should not be surprised when some professing believers show themselves to be false. It's a sad reality that there are many in the church who think they knew, know God, but in fact do not. Now, I know that as I say this, some of you are going, you know, wow, what about me? I'm, you know, you're, you're, you're somehow frightened by this. Well, I want to encourage you. What can we do to make sure that we're not one of them? That, as it says in Matthew chapter 7, there are some who are going to appear before Jesus at the judgment day, only to hear those terrible words, depart from me, I never knew you. These are people who think they're going to heaven, but they're not. What can we do? Well, Paul tells us very clearly what we ought to be doing. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. What does this mean? It means holding ourselves to the mirror of God's word and keep repenting, and keep pressing on in our Christian walk. Remember, brothers and sisters, that salvation is not a decision made in a moment of time, but it is an ongoing process from repentance to promotion to glory. Although we must confess, although we must have those initial dealings with Christ, repenting of our sins and confessing our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and being baptized. 
brothers and sisters, the true test of whether that was a genuine conversion is whether we walk with the Lord day by day. And that's what Paul means when he says, examine yourself and test yourself. Keep holding yourself up to the light of God's word. And as that light shines upon your life and reveals those hidden closets and those corners, deal with those things and confess them to the Lord and keep pressing on and walking in obedience with the Lord. That's the true proof that we are truly saved. Remember that in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, it says, it is those who persevere to the end, who will be saved. Well, that's all I have for you today. I trust that these words from God's word have been encouraging to your heart. Perhaps for some of you, they've been a conviction. I just pray that however you've received the word of God, that you'll receive it with meekness of heart and with a joy in the Lord to keep pursuing him in this desire to walk with him. And again, if you have never made that faith commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, how I pray that you would do so this day. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you would bless it to our hearts. We pray, our Father, for grace to persevere unto the end. Give us grace, Lord, to be faithful in our Bible reading. Lord, to do so uh, letting the word shine into our lives and dealing with whatever you show us there. Oh, our Father, we confess our sins and we acknowledge, O oh Lord, our need of your grace, that we might be able to keep walking in the way of your word. And knowing our Father, we thank you for the uh, encouragement and the hope that we have, that as we do so, we can have that calm assurance that we are one of your children and that we have the hope of eternal life. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we conclude, I want to encourage you, if you haven't yet, to subscribe and turn on notifications, and then share your comments, your questions, and your insights. Use this as an opportunity to fellowship with one another through this, this means. And if you've been encouraged, I would uh, encourage you to copy the link and pass this along to someone else who might benefit from it. I would also encourage you to check out the links in the description. There'll be some uh, links there that you can use that will be a blessing to you. Now I'm going to leave you with this benediction. This again is from Ephesians. We've looked at the beginning. Now we're going to look at the end. Peace to you and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you this day.